Prayer itself, in general, is a request to God to help us know and do His will. It is the opportunity we have to let Him, in turn, use us as instruments for the fulfilment of His purposes. Communicating with the Divine through prayer is a sublime way to strengthen our spiritual connection. The Holy Scriptures encourage us to seek the Creator in moments of supplication, placing our trust in Him in all situations. In the teachings of Jesus, we find an inspiring promise about the effectiveness of prayer, recorded in the book of Matthew, chapter 7. Let's look at His words. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Brothers and sisters, it is undeniable that the depth of our spiritual life is proportional to the quality of our prayers. Prayer has the power to transform not only individuals, but also the circumstances around us. It works internal miracles, reshaping our being. The key is to understand the proper way to pray. You might wonder, is it possible to pray during everyday activities? such as a shower or a walk? Is it necessary to vocalize our prayers? Or can we do it silently? Should we adopt a specific posture when praying? The truth is that these aspects are secondary. What truly matters is the sincerity of our hearts and our humility before the Heavenly Father. However, there are common mistakes in the practice of prayer that should be avoided as they can interfere with our relationship with the Divine. In this video I will reveal six frequent prayer mistakes that can prevent our supplications from being answered, weakening our faith and destabilizing our spiritual balance. Before we proceed, I would like to invite you to show your support by liking, subscribing to the channel and activating notifications so you don't miss any new content. Now, let's move forward. First, mistake, praying in a religious manner. Some think that prayer is a rigid ritual where every word and gesture must be meticulously chosen to be heard by God. This is a misconception and contradicts biblical teachings. It is essential to understand that God's response to our prayers does not depend on the moment, place or physical posture. The scriptures assure us of this truth. Let's reflect on what is written in 1 John chapter 5. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of Him. Prayer transcends a mere sequence of correct words. It is not an incantation. It is unnecessary to recite prayers passed down through generations as if they were the only way to reach God's presence. Jesus warned us about this. When you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Praying is conversing with God, establishing a relationship of closeness, without excessive formalities, as if we were before a high earthly authority. God is the sovereign of the cosmos, the Lord of lords, but more than that, He is our Father and our greatest confidant. Do you agree? Second mistake, praying without trusting in God's will. It is crucial to remember that God has a path for us, and this path does not always align with our desires. Jesus taught us in John chapter 15 verse 7. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. 
Does this mean we will receive everything we ask of God? Not necessarily. If you are wondering why your expectations are not being met, consider this. Perhaps you are requesting something that does not fit into the Lord's plans for you. And even worse, maybe it is causing frustration. The Bible assures us that the Lord's plans are good, perfect, and bring us contentment. Therefore, it is essential to pray with the confidence that God's plans for us are superior and grander than our own. God is benevolent, brothers and sisters, and He is our Father. He knows what is best for each of us. Amen. As we develop a close relationship with God, we begin to understand His heart and have a clearer vision of what we should ask for in prayer and what God's will is for our lives. With this understanding, life becomes more serene and our practice of prayer more gratifying. Amen. Third mistake, praying without glorifying God. When elevating our prayers, we must ask ourselves, do we seek only favors or do we truly exalt the name of the Lord? Choosing the former is to deviate from the sacred purpose of prayer and such an attitude will not find favor in God's heart. The essence of prayer lies in discerning whether our requests stem from selfish desires or genuinely aim at glorifying the Almighty. No matter how fervent our requests are, they must always aim at the exaltation of the Creator. King Hezekiah exemplified this magnificently when facing the threat of a vast army against Israel. In his anguish, without another refuge, he pleaded, Now, Lord, our God, deliver us from his hand so that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone, Lord, are God. Hezekiah's plea had the purpose of manifesting God's sovereignty before all nations. Therefore, the answers to our prayers must always revere and magnify the Lord. This is why we traditionally conclude our prayers with in Jesus' name. After all, as the Saviour assured us, we will be heard if we remain faithful to him. Remember, my brother, the prayer spoken in the name of Christ and for his glory is the one that God is ready to answer. Amen. Fourth mistake, focusing only on material blessings. Often, as Christians, we proclaim our blessings when life smiles upon us, don't we? Inadvertently, we equate these periods of happiness or success with divine blessings. Indeed, these are aspects of the gifts the Lord has for us, but they do not constitute His primary concern. Many receive the blessings and forget who grants them. Although it is gratifying to be blessed, we should not limit God's power to mere material rewards. Let's listen to what the Apostle Paul taught us. The kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Whoever serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. Focusing our prayers solely on material gains is a serious mistake. The Lord bestows upon us more significant blessings such as the anointing of the Holy Spirit, our health, daily protection, strength to overcome adversities, and above all, the salvation offered by Christ on the cross. Therefore, remember that the blessings in your life are more abundant than can be counted. Let us be grateful in all situations. Amen. Fifth mistake, praying with an anxious or worried heart. Anxiety and worry are increasingly present emotions in our daily lives. We worry about work, family, financial stability. The uncertainty of tomorrow makes us uneasy, questioning whether we will have resources for basic needs. This emotional turmoil can be an obstacle when seeking a moment of tranquility to connect with God. Often problems overwhelm us to the point of forgetting the importance of prayer. This reflects in the sadness and inner emptiness that many feel, even those who appear to have material success. Anxiety can corrode our spiritual life,
distancing us from the Lord's presence. But brothers and sisters, this is not what he desires for us. He yearns for us to come before him with confident and faith-filled hearts, regardless of the challenges faced. The Apostle Paul guides us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition. With thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The Lord is aware of our tribulations and limitations. He knows each of our worries and expects us to place everything in his hands. True serenity arises when we trust our lives to the Lord. God desires our sincerity and for us to share all our anxieties with him. When it is difficult to trust and keep the faith, I am sure that he will answer our prayers and calm our hearts as we approach him with total surrender. Amen. Sixth mistake, not listening to God's voice. Often when approaching prayer, we fall into the most common mistake among the faithful. The rush to pour out our desires and worries before the Lord, forgetting a crucial aspect, silence. It is in silence that we can truly hear what God wants to communicate to us. Let's see what Jesus teaches us about this. Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me, has eternal life, and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. Very truly, I tell you, a time is coming, and has now come, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. The call to listen to the divine voice through the Holy Spirit dwelling in us is an invitation to be guided by him and to live in a way that pleases God. Listening to God requires discipline and constant practice, honing our ability to hear spiritually. Amid the noise of everyday life, it is challenging to discern the Lord's voice. Therefore, it is essential to set aside moments for prayer, disconnecting from distractions like cell phones and televisions, and quieting conversations to calm the spirit. God wishes to communicate with us in the depths of our being, inspiring thoughts and ideas that reflect his will for our actions. Often during prayer, ideas emerge in our minds, possibly the divine answer we seek. Besides prayer, God speaks to us continuously through the scriptures, written by men under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The secret lies in speaking less and being more attentive to the Lord's voice. As highlighted in this video, prayer is vital for a deep relationship with God. The scripture reveals that the prayer of an obedient and loving individual is powerful and effective. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us be loyal and avoid these mistakes in prayer, as they can obstruct our communication with the Creator which is not the divine purpose for us. James in chapter 5 teaches us that the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective, serving as a spiritual weapon against evil forces. However, many Christians neglect the practice of prayer. Some pray, but do not receive what they ask for because they make selfish requests, aiming only at personal satisfaction. It is important to recognize that our actions after prayer influence God's response to our supplications. Praying daily is fundamental, but the attitudes we take after presenting our requests to God are equally significant. In today's video, I will present five attitudes that we should avoid after prayer, as they are crucial for our spiritual life and our communion with God. Amen. First thing, do not cling to sin. After concluding a moment of prayer, it is essential to avoid actions that deliberately contradict divine teachings. You may ask, how so? Allow me to illustrate with an example. Suppose you have just prayed and meet friends. 
you decide to go to a bar, drink, and casually get involved with someone. This intentional act of sin, despite knowing biblical teachings, devalues your previous prayers in God's eyes. This applies to all aspects of life. The Bible guides us. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. It is not necessary to be perfect to approach God. After all, we are all flawed. We are saved by divine grace, as the Apostle Paul reminds us. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Although we all sin, God loves us and blesses us. Sinning knowingly after prayer indicates a lack of sincerity. We recognize that temptations are strong, but as Paul expressed, we do not always do the good we desire. After finishing your prayers, confess your sins and ask Jesus for help to overcome temptations. Thus, even if you fail, God will recognize the sincerity of your heart. Avoid being like those described by Jesus. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Second thing, do not be hypocritical. Christ is the supreme model of conduct in all aspects of life, including the practice of prayer. He not only prayed, but lived what he preached. There is no record in the scriptures of Jesus acting or thinking, contrary to what God desired after a conversation with the Father. This demonstrates that Christ's life was in full harmony with his prayers, and this is the example we should follow. The Bible warns us, with the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? Proclaiming love for God in prayer and then immediately harming someone, lying or slandering, does not align with the professed faith. Saying thy will be done in the Lord's prayer and acting selfishly, ignoring divine teachings, contradicts your own prayers, which can result in God not answering. He expects his children to be integral and just, without hypocrisy or falseness. It is not enough to appear devout during prayer and allow sin to govern your life immediately afterward. To be heard by the Lord, be inspired by King David, who repented and transformed his life. He expressed, Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped, as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and did not cover up my iniquity, I said. I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Third thing, do not forget God's promises. In our prayers, we often exalt God and ask him to fulfill the promises made in our lives. The Bible assures us that God has splendid plans for each of us. Then one might ask why, after praying, do we often let pessimism take over regarding our future and God's purposes for us? Do we quickly forget the Lord's promises, allowing negative thoughts to prevail? God never goes back on his promises. Let's observe what the scriptures tell us. God is not human, that he should lie, not a human being, that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Therefore, brothers and sisters, do not lose sight of God's faithfulness 
when facing the first post-prayer obstacle, we all have moments of uncertainty, where even the Lord's generosity might be questioned. However, after prayer, we must not let such doubts persist, as this would be like believing that our adversities are greater than God's power. Fourth thing, do not forget to thank God for listening. Let's take Jesus as our guide in the prayer journey, reflecting on a passage from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, which recounts the miracle of the resurrection of Lazarus. The passage says, Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odour, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Notice, brothers and sisters, Jesus' attitude. He expressed gratitude to the Father for having been heard, even before Lazarus came out of the tomb. We should adopt this same posture. Thanking God should not be an act conditioned on the miracle's fulfillment. It is not correct to praise the Lord only after the realization of our desires. As followers of Christ, we must express our gratitude to God for listening to us, regardless of the response. Otherwise, we are suggesting that God is only worthy of our faith, praise, and gratitude after meeting our wishes. Therefore, if you prayed for a job, thank him before receiving the company's call. If you asked for a happy marriage, thank him before finding your soulmate. If you pleaded for a loved one's health, say thank you, Lord, before obtaining the medical results. Certainly, God will be pleased with your faith and attitude. Amen. Fifth thing, do not stop seeking God. Jesus taught us that persistence in prayer is essential, and this is vividly illustrated in the parable of the unjust judge and the widow narrated in Luke chapter 18. The story presents us with a judge devoid of fear of God and compassion for people who refuse to do justice. On the other hand, a persistent widow, despite her social vulnerability, insisted on her plea for justice. The widow's persistence overcame the judge's resistance. Jesus used this parable to contrast the judge's attitude with God's nature, who is just and attentive to our prayers. If even an uncompassionate judge can yield to persistence, how much more will God, who is loving and just, respond to those who seek him tirelessly. Jesus reinforces this message in Matthew chapter 7, saying, Everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone, or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Let us celebrate, then, God's willingness to hear our prayers. He may not respond immediately or in the way we expect, for his plans are greater than ours. However, perseverance in prayer is crucial, and we should not give up, even in the face of challenges keeping our hearts open and our faith firm. The gates of heaven will remain accessible. Amen. If this message resonated with you, feel free to share it and subscribe for more reflections. May God bless you until our next meeting.